This morning's gospel is from the sixth chapter of Luke. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend. Expect nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father in heaven and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's been a struggle of mine to love my enemy, to love someone who hates me. But if I was to be honest, it's the words enemy and hate that bother me the most. You see, I struggle with understanding what I have done or perhaps what I do. Why somebody would go to that extreme and consider me their enemy. Perhaps I'm just too naive. I've been accused of that before. Too trusting. Too nice. Or maybe, on the other side of the coin, maybe I'm just too arrogant. But in either case, I struggle with it. You see, this morning's gospel reading, we find ourselves listening again to the words of Jesus as he continues on his sermon on the plain, teaching those who would listen to him, teaching all of us the law of God, because that's what it is. It is God's law. It's his untold, the untold expectations that God has for all of his children instructions, if you will, on how we are to live, what to do, what not to do. Offer one cheek, and if necessary, offer the other as well. If you give your coat to someone, be ready to give your shirt as well. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love. Love your enemies. It's the ultimate ideal, if you will. It's the best of the best. To live as God commands us, as Jesus taught us. Not a one-time event, but rather it's a lifelong commitment. It is God's law. A law that we as Christians follow. But this morning we hear Jesus asking, how are we doing with the law? I have to admit, I kind of took this week to look back on my life. To 
to see when I first, I think I first realized the words hate an enemy. And as a kid living in southwest Philadelphia, growing up on the streets, at about 11, things started to change for us. Integration was suddenly replacing segregation. Tensions were high. The neighborhoods were soon to change. They call it the great white flight. Walking those nine blocks to the playground, to where I hung out with my friends, suddenly became more and more dangerous. Going to school as we were shipped to a different neighborhood, required police interactions. People started to lock their doors. Cultures were clashing. Rampant fear consumed our neighborhoods. Suddenly, so suddenly, without even realizing it, I was surrounded by the hatred, the mistrust, and anger. People I used to hang out with suddenly were told we're enemies. It's what we have been taught, what we were instructed by parents, neighbors, schools. It was to be, as long as we chose it to have it that way, it was to be for the time being. It was just one example from my life, and a multitude of other examples have followed. And the realization for me is when Jesus' question, how good are you doing with it, Neil? I have to be honest and say I could be doing a lot better. And I'm sure, given a chance to reflect Perhaps you have examples in your own life as well. It's easy to say that we have no enemies. It's easy to put aside those feelings, those emotions, when somebody doesn't like you. When you believe something or someone is your enemy. To rationalize it, to turn your backs on it. Cast away and push aside those feelings, those emotions, and go about our daily lives. Yet deep inside, you still have these feelings as they continue to grow. And what my mother, my grandmother would say, fester over and over. It's a struggle. And it's a struggle we all live with. Jesus' words are God's law this morning. To love one another, one's enemies. To go beyond our understanding. Because it's not as black and white as we make it out to be. It really isn't. It's not about our aligning ourselves with the right people or the right thing. It isn't about us being able to judge others. These words, Jesus' words are as simple, as simple as they seem, are difficult, very difficult for us to understand. But Jesus makes no bones about it in Luke's passage today. Jesus is saying these words are for you and me. Not as a group, but individually. It is God's law. But, but we have Jesus. And because Jesus is teaching us, we have God's grace as well in this. God's grace, which is inviting us to turn it over to him. To lay the burdens of mistrust and anger, and yes, even if I dare say, hatred. And lay it on the base of that cross. To get away from judging from others. To begin to look deep, deep within ourselves, refusing 
to allow our past to dictate what our present and future is or will be. I believe Jesus is asking us to really redefine that word enemy and how we look at that word. To redefine or look and then consider the word hatred and, and, and as it applies to us. God's law says we are to love our enemies. God's grace says Jesus is waiting for us. Waiting for us to walk with him in our lives. Ready to lead us to this kind of love where we love all for who and what they are. We have a lot of work to do. But it's not only the people of God that God is calling. It is also our communities and our world. As one confirmation student said just this past week, Pastor, can you imagine what it would be like if everybody in the world loved everybody? Eleven years old and the wisdom from an eleven-year-old. Yes, I can imagine that because I believe God imagines that. Yes, do we believe this could happen? Yes, it can happen because Jesus believes it can happen. We just have to get out of our own way. We just have to listen to the words of Jesus Christ. We just have to turn it all over to the one who's asking for it, God, our Father. It's going to be a struggle. It has been a struggle, loving our enemies, trying to move away from the hatred that is existing in our world today. But we can do it. And it doesn't all fall on our shoulders because... God has talked to us through the, through the words of Jesus Christ. It's going to be a struggle, he says, but I got it. I've got you. I've got your back. The struggle will be for all of us. Sisters and brothers, we don't have to do it alone. In the voice of Jesus, in the words of Luke, through the command of God our Father, we have been shown the way. We have one another. We have love for one another. And we also have God. And God loves you. So do I. Amen.